uh, Obadiah. And uh, there was a passage in Obadiah that talks about how Obadiah, under the inspiration of God, um, pronounced a curse of, upon the Edomites. And the question was uh, concerning the issue of when the uh, people of Israel were overthrown, uh, who were the people that overthrew Israel during the time of this writing? And so when I was doing some research on this, uh, reading through Obadiah, I said, you know what, this would be a, a good, quick Bible study uh, because Obadiah is only, you know, t- 25 verses or something like that. It's one of the shortest books in the Old Testament as well as in the entire uh, King James Bible. So I thought it would be good if we could kind of review Obadiah and see if we can get some questions answered there, all right? So in order to do that, though, we're going to have to go to our Old Testament because Obadiah is not in the New Testament, amen? Okay? So one way to get to Obadiah, if you want to start from the back of the Old Testament, you got Malachi, right? You got Malachi, Zechariah, uh, Haggai, Zephaniah, and then you got uh, your, your Habakkuk, Nahum, Micah, and then you got your, um, I think it's uh, Jonah, and then you got Obadiah. If you wind up in Amos, Joel, or Hosea, or something of that nature, you've gone too far to your left. Joel, Amos, Amos, and Obadiah. Huh? Joel, Amos, and Obadiah. That's, that's if you're going from left to right, not from, I was going backwards. Because <laughs> it's easy to get to. I didn't want to start from Genesis. That's why I started from Malachi. Okay. But you're right. You got Amos, Obadiah. Uh, you got Joel, Amos, Obadiah. Yeah, correct. Okay. But are we able to find Obadiah? Sometimes it's easy to miss because it's a small chapter. One chapter? Yeah. And it's got 21 verses. I stand corrected. I said 25. It only has 21 verses. So Obadiah is kind of a hard, hard book to find sometimes. But um, Obadiah is, a, is an interesting book. Um, Obadiah, just, it says the book of Obadiah. Obadiah was actually a very common name back in the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, you could track anywhere from 8 to 10 different Obadiahs in the Old Testament. Um, I do not know which Obadiah is actually here uh, that wrote this particular text, if he's one of the eight to ten Obadiahs in the Old Testament, or if this is a totally different Obadiah, uh, because he really doesn't give a time, a time frame of when uh, he wrote this. A lot of uh, these minor prophets, when they write, they'll say, in the days of Uzziah the king, and blah, 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 and they'll give you some kind of hint as to when the the text was actually written. Here it doesn't give us that information. It just goes straight into a pronouncement of judgment upon the children of Edom. All right? So are we okay with that so far? Now, uh, there's, a, there's a lot that we're going to reference here. And um, Edom is this area down here. All right? Now, Edom at the time, it was sort of like a, a vassal state or it's kind of like I don't know, Guam or Puerto Rico is to the United States. It wasn't a state, but it was a province or it was under the rule of the United States, if you will. And so it's its own nation, uh, but they were beholden to Israel and and Judah. Israel and Judah kind of ran the show. And the people of Edom didn't like that uh, too much. But however, we're going to discover in Obadiah what happened was that when the children of Israel, particularly Judah, when when they were overthrown, the people of Edom got excited about it because they didn't like being under the thumb of Israel and Judah. And as a result, uh, God didn't like that because God said that you're not supposed to get excited when, when my people are being you know, oppressed or attacked or persecuted and things of that nature. And you say, well, how does that apply today? Well, guess who's God's people today? We are, the church. Amen. We just read in 1 Peter 2 that we are a peculiar people, that we are a royal priesthood. All right, that we are the children of God. All right, so we're God's people. And so when we're mistreated, guess what? God's going to take note of that as well. All right? So let's uh, get into this real quick. We'll go through it's only 21 verses. <clears throat> and if we're all there, I'll begin reading. It says, The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Now, i got to stop right there. I, I, I want to go further. I really do. But 
I got to get some of these questions answered. What's the, what's the vision? It says the vision of Obadiah. What's the vision? Huh? It's, it's, it's uh, a future? Yeah, it's like seeing into the future. Prophets were called, you see, in the, uh, in the, especially in the Old Testament, prophets were called seers because they could see things into the future by, by way of the, the Holy Spirit, of course. The, S-E-E-R, seer. They were called seers. Yeah. Now, you had really two major ways in which these prophets saw things in the future. You had what they call visions and you have dreams, right? Now, and, and it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty simple. A vision is something that generally... <laughs> okay, a vision is something that can generally happen even during the day. And then uh, a dream is something that generally happens at night when you take, have a dream. The Old Testament Joseph, he had dreams, Right? So that was during the night of when he was asleep and he had a dream. A vision is something that can happen while you're actually awake and you see something. So it basically, if the Lord is in it, it's giving you a glimpse into the future. All right. But that's what I meant by, you know, what's the difference between a vision or a dream or what is a vision? It's something that you can, that is given to you even during the day. Now, what's interesting here also is, is that a lot of times when the prophets speak, and you'll see this a lot in, in text, Old Testament and New Testament, a lot of times when the prophets spoke, they speak as though the event has already happened when it didn't. And we're going to see language in here where it's going to be all past tense. So even though there's a prophecy being given, it really hadn't happened yet, but the prophet will talk about it as though it's already happened, which is okay to do because when God says something's going to happen, it's going to happen regardless. Amen? Okay. So uh, the vision of Obadiah, we, we don't know quite who Obadiah is here, um, but we'll, we'll get into that a little later. It says, Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Now, who is Edom and where did Edom come from? Edom is a nation. Who is Edom, but who started Edom? Who is Edom and where did Edom come from? Well, we get the answer in Genesis 5. Go back to the first book of the Bible. Go back to the book of beginnings. Uh, Genesis 25, excuse me. Genesis 25. First book of the Bible, Genesis 25. First book of the Bible, Genesis 25. And we'll figure out where Edom came from. Uh, Do, 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 Okay, let's go to Genesis. Are we in the first book of the Bible? Okay, I want you to start. I'm going to start at verse 21, okay? Are we there? Okay, Genesis 25, 21. It says, and Isaac, who's Isaac? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? This, this Isaac is, is Abraham's son. Okay, now Isaac married this lady named Rebecca. Guess what? Rebecca's barren. But, but because they pray to the Lord, God's going to bless them with the child anyway, right? We talked about this before. 100% of the women in the, in the Bible who were barren, who prayed for a child, God gave them at least one child, if not more. That's, that's just a fact of the Bible. Um, reading uh, Genesis twenty five twenty one, it says, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah... His wife conceived, and the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am, am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So there must have been a lot of bumping and kicking going on in there. I, I'm not a man, so ladies, forgive me for my ignorance. I have no idea what it's like to carry a child, especially twins. Okay, I may, I may play one on TV, right? But I, I, trust me, I, I, I'm not carrying. But uh, at least not twins. But anyway, going back to the text here, it says that uh, Rebecca was concerned because there was something going on within her and within her womb. And in verse 23, it says, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. 
and Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. All right? Now, um, well, I'll go ahead and read the rest of it. Uh, it says, And the boys grew, and Esau became a, 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 was a, hunt, a cunning hunter and a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sighed potters. Now, these are old time, 1600, you know, 1611 King James Bibles where sod means to boil or to seethe something. And pottage, that's just another word for broth or soup or stew or something of that nature. That's what pottage means. So Jacob sod pottage and Esau came from the field and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. So the pottage was red. I don't know if he had tomatoes in it or whatever. I don't know. But it was red pottage, red soup, red broth, whatever it was. He said, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called, ta-da. See how the Bible answers itself? Okay. Now, I would have thought he would have been called Edom when he came out of his mother's womb because they said he was red then, you know. But then he wasn't referred to as Edom until he partook of this red soup or this red pottage or stew or whatever it was. Verse 31 of Genesis 25, it says, And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swear unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. Lentils is another word for some type of vegetables. Or I'm sorry? Like beans. Some kind of oh, yeah, like beans. Yeah, something of that nature. Yeah, we even use that word today. How about that? And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Now, what is this birthright business all about? Well, the custom of the day was back during this time that the firstborn was the one who got the inheritance or at least the majority of the inheritance. Okay, Esau was the firstborn. So he was the, he was the one who had the birthright. He, he was the one who had the initial inheritance. But he gave that to his younger brother so he could be, so he could eat. All right. So he sold his birthright to Jacob. So now Jacob was to get the inheritance instead of his older brother, which was traditionally how things were done, where the oldest child was the one who, who got the inheritance, or at least the majority of the inheritance. All right? And it said from that day forth that uh, Esau despised his birthright. Well, we know that Jacob went on to be uh, um, uh, the, a father of the, uh, he later went on to be Israel, and the father of, of the 12 tribes of Israel. And then we also know that the lineage of Jesus came through Jacob and not Esau. So Esau gave up his birthright. Who knows what all he gave up? But God already knew what was going to happen before it happened. He already knew the decisions that these people were going to make. Now, some Calvinists will say, well, you see, God had already predestined Jacob for this, and he had already had this figured out. No, God knew what was going on. But you have to keep in mind, Esau still had free will. Esau did not have to sell his birthright. No one, you know, put a gun to his head and say, sell your birthright to Jacob. Esau made a conscious decision to do that. God just knew the decision that Esau was going to make. So this is not some type of predestination or Calvinism or anything going on. This is just showing you the initiance of God and him knowing what's going to happen before it even happened. Okay? So because now we know the link here, Genesis 25 tells us that Esau is going to later get married and have kids and all that kind of stuff, and it's going to lead to the nation of Edom. Because God said there's going to be two nations and they're going to be struggling with each other. And they've been struggling with each other literally since before they were born. Because when Esau came out of his mother's womb, they said Jacob was hanging on to him. <laughs> so they were fighting the whole time. Okay. Now, um, let's look at one other reason. Let, let's look at one other passage of scripture. And then we're going to have to dismiss because we want to prepare for the rest of the worship. I want you to uh, leave the first book of the Bible that talks about Esau and Edom, I want you to go to the, the, the last book of the Old Testament, which is what? Starts with an M. Malachi. Malachi. All right. Who also sings in the choir. <laughs> All right. Looks good to, to, to be that old, huh? Okay. We're going from the first book of the Old Testament to the last book of the Old Testament, and I want you to look at the very first verse. I want to show you the importance of Esau and Edom here. 
because, you know, he's, uh, the Edomites are talked about throughout Scripture. And we'll learn this a, a little later. Uh, Malachi 1, are we there? Mm-hmm. Look at the very first three verses of Malachi 1. It says, The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord, yet I love Jacob? Verse 3, And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons and of the wilderness. And then, uh, let's see, verse 4. Let me see if I can throw that in here. Verse 4, Whereas Edom said, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So let's go back to uh, verse number 3. A lot of people have problems with that verse number 3 because it says that uh, Esau hated Jacob. And you say, well, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, that the Lord Esau hated. I messed that up. That the Lord hated Esau, excuse me, and that he loved Jacob. All right. And you say, well, where did that come from? Well, this pronouncement was done here in Malachi. This pronouncement was done after the children were born. So this is not God saying before they were even born, I hate Esau. Okay. Something had to happen from the time they were born up until Malachi, up until now, for this statement to be made. Okay. So please don't think that God decides even before children are born that, hey, I love one and I hate the other. That's not the case. Even in the New Testament, it says that when Jacob and Esau were in the room, he said they knew neither good nor evil because they were in the womb. They didn't know. Even after they were born, they didn't know good and evil. All right. But you say, why is it that this statement is in here? Well, Obadiah is the only book of the Bible that gives specific information on why God had a problem with Edom. Okay. Now, there are many places in the Bible where the Edomites and, and, and the Israelites clashed. But Obadiah, Obadiah, <laughs> Obadiah, <laughs> Obadiah gives specific information as to why the Lord had a problem with uh, Edom. And I got to go. But let's turn to one other place because, you, you, you know, I, I don't know when to quit. Um, turn to the book. <laughs> I don't. Y'all got to pray with me about that. Turn to the book of Psalms. Then turn to your right in Proverbs. I think it's the, uh, yeah, Proverbs 6 and 16. Then we got to go. Proverbs 6, 16. Then we got to go. Proverbs 6, 16. And then we got to go. Now, Obadiah talks a lot about how Edom was a very proud nation, how they lived in the mountains and they looked down upon other people. It's, and, and it's hard to be prideful without looking down on others. You can say, man, I got this, and I'm doing that, and I got that. But it's hard to do that without at the same sign, time saying, you don't have what I have. All right? So um, Proverbs 6 and 16, then we got to go. These six things doth the Lord what? Hey, hey. hey. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. What's the first one listed in verse 17? A proud look, pride. You know, that's what got Adam and Eve kicked out of the garden, right? That's what got Satan kicked out of heaven. I shall set my throne above God, according to Isaiah 14, 14, somewhere in there. You can go back and check on that. I shall be higher than the most high God. Now, Satan, it was full of pride. Eve, she desired the fruit. Why? Because the serpent told her, you can be as God. All right? And so we got to watch pride. God, the very first thing that God lists here is a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that divides with wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord amongst the brethren. Notice, drunkenness isn't listed here. Theft isn't listed here. Now, are those bad sins? Absolutely. But God is pointing out some sins that he considers an abomination to them. So it's not saying that it's okay to get drunk. That's that's not my point. (laughs) But I'm saying there are a lot of sins that are left out. But God has a real problem with with these because he said, uh, six things do I hate, yea, seven are an abomination. And the very first one on the list is pride. And when we go back and read Obadiah, and I would invite you to read Obadiah, it's only 21 verses between now and next Sunday. You will see that one of the first things that God accuses the land, the nation of Edom of, is that they're a proud people. And God has a problem with pride. 
<laughs> and it isn't, isn't it amazing that we got the LGBT community? Well, what is their mantra? What, what do they display on their shirts? <laughs> the very thing that God said is an abomination and what I hate, that, that's their battle cry. You ever think about that? Somebody's not reading their Bible, are they? Because that's the very first thing that God said that he hated. Okay, so we're going to dismiss. Uh, do we have-